Who's ready for another video on a game that's not done yet? I know I am. The Hello Neighbor beta dropped not too long ago, and it promises to be more Hello Neighbor. Just to recap, we've had a pre-alpha, then four different alphas, and now we have the beta. The full game comes out August 29th, and theoretically, it will have everything we could ever want to know from the Hello Neighbor universe. Hello Neighbor, Suburb, Rube Goldberg, House, I, I, don't, I don't know. Right now, right now, we've got the beta, and it has some new stuff. New mysterious stuff. Will you be able to handle the mystery? I mean, just look at this update already. The neighbor's car has crashed into the white picket fence. Could this mean the neighbor was abused by a fence in his past? And look, our house has been given a new interior. Is it possible this is the work of the Illuminati? <gasps> I'll ask the question again. Will you be able to handle the mystery? I'll bet you won't. Roll it. As soon as this game starts, we're greeted with the familiar opening cutscene similar to Alpha 4. There's a loud banging at the door and a letter that comes through telling us we've been evicted, as noted by the Russianish letters and by the developer during the beta reveal back in June. Overall, there's nothing new in this apartment, except if you take the binoculars and look out the window, yeah. Um, I'm guessing those are the neighbor's limbs, and when we ghost on over to see what, what's going on, the neighbor is laughing hysterically at us. Or maybe watching TV without a TV? Now, I'm I'm assuming he's supposed to be watching us from a window or the rooftop, but, but hey, it's a beta. Another interesting thing to note is right next to the front door is this picture of the infamous house with, presumably, the neighbor silhouette standing proudly with a much smaller silhouette right in front. Recall last time I insinuated that the neighbor is our dad. Some of you guys said he might be our older brother, but judging by this painting, I'm not so sure about that. There's either a huge age gap between us as siblings or he's just our dad. I'm going with the dad theory. And Anyways, we leave the apartment and roll up to what is supposedly our childhood house. Also, our car has no doors. After going through the regular motions of unlocking the front door and prying the boards off, we can finally bring stuff inside. Like this box. Alright. Can't, can't seem to get this box off the top of my car. Uh, suitcase? Nope. Chair? Yes! And then the cutscene gets triggered. So pretty much the same cutscene as before. Cool. And like in Alpha 4, the house turns from normal creepy to weird creepy in, uh, after the cutscene. Then when we re-enter the house to get in that door, we're met with a hiding tutorial that's so glitchy it takes a couple times to hide in the wardrobe and, and then we get caught anyways. Safe to say, a feature of this beta is that it's really glitchy. Moving on. Word on the street was that new minigames were added, so let's check that out, eh? After totally not cheating and draining the water from this faucet, we gain access to a room with a vault door. This room, sealed with a vault door, is now not full of water and has the entrance to this new minigame. It's a minigame with mannequins that, that have no sense of personal space. Also, every time we throw the basketball, the mannequins fetch it just long enough to cover some ground. Rinse repeat. All the way across this abandoned factory. But get this, there's a giant version of the shadowy man floating just outside the factory. Remember the shadowy man? He's watching us. After looking around some more with and without flying, all I found was an old mannequin arm with steam coming out of the floor beneath it and some, some barrels. Great, to the door. Huh. No cutscene, no new abilities. Cool. Next is the supermarket minigame, where I can only imagine there's all kinds of symbolism going on. For instance, this shopping cart. Could it be our neighbor has become a shopping cart? After some kind of accident. In a supermarket with mannequins! Seriously, I have no idea what the fuck is going on here. There's no cutscene when you beat the minigame either. Oh, also the shadow guy is watching us from the rafters in this minigame. This guy is everywhere! Who is he? Only time will tell. The end of the minigame shows us a mannequin at a cash register. Hmm. Also, if we ghost outside, we see a shadowy gramophone. Probably a representation of the one we saw last time on the floor with a broken record after retrieving the golden apple. And also after getting sucked into the gramophone. That was sitting next to a sign with a person with four kids kind of hanging on, falling off, or, or on the ground. I think I said it was three kids on the sign in the last Hello Neighbor video, and, and that was my bad. The one in the corner is kind of hard to spot, so maybe there's four siblings in this family? Assuming this sign is about the family. We've got the neighbor as 
the dad, us as the son, the mother as dead or kidnapped, a daughter who is possibly kidnapped, and then one who is probably dead, we'll go over that in this video in a bit, and then one who is totally unaccounted for. Hmm. Really, I, I don't want to put too much credit in this sign, but I do think it's interesting. Looking back at the minigames, as bizarre and hard to interpret as these glitch fests are, they're clearly occurring during some sort of dream sequence. All I'm saying is giant shadowy gramophones don't usually float around in the reality I happen to occupy. I touched on this dream sequence idea in the last video. I'm probably not the only one to have thought of it, but really the idea is simple. These minigames aren't done. The game is in beta. All we really know is that things that happen in the minigames don't happen outside of them. Things like mannequins crowding around you and fetching basketballs or roaming around a supermarket or a school. Not to mention the shadowy figure always watching you. I believe these are dreams that we play through and each is supposed to represent a kind of fear or bad memory we've had since childhood. We know our protagonist grew up in this house and therefore this neighborhood and we know the developers have gone to the trouble of having a neighborhood. Even if it's just for show at this point. There's a school, a hospital, a factory, a church, and houses. The key locations here are school and factory. The minigame with the basketball fetching mannequins certainly occurs in some kind of factory, and the school one obviously occurs in a school. Is it far-fetched to say that something traumatic happened to us, or someone at the school and another terrible trauma happened at the factory? The only thing I can pull out of the traumatic event interpretation of the factory minigame is this weird mannequin animation we see sometimes. Is this mannequin trying its hardest to pull open a door or a hatch to escape from the disaster within the factory? Maybe we'll see the finished version in the finished game? Just a guess. We even hear a sort of Geiger counter noise at the beginning of the story sequence. A raw, surreal memory of some kind of industrial disaster? We can't know the specifics yet, but I think the fact that we gain abilities after each minigame, well, well the ones from Alpha 4 that is, is because we're overcoming these terrifying past events and subconscious fears and becoming empowered by it. This is what I can gather from the most recent updates. Now connect all this with the end of Alpha 3 the neighbor sobbing, not a rolling metal cart to be found. Something horrible happened and our crazy neighbor dad is upset, like really upset. It's a memory of ours from childhood, and when we look through the peephole we see the shadow man for the first time. Remember the first time we saw the shadow man? Only to have him follow us around throughout these minigames and the gramophone cutscene. With the inclusion of a distant yet detailed church in the surrounding neighborhood, the demonic markings on the shoe of our neighbor, demonic voices in previous alphas, it's also likely that some kind of demonic theme is going on here. Is the shadow man even a man at all? Could he be a demon? The devil. We've talked about the possibility of a wife and child dying and our father going to extra dimensional means to bring them back. By the way, the child dying part of the theory accounts for that one more child I talked about earlier. To recap, we have us, the child in the basement, who honestly may or may not be our sibling, the dead child who the neighbor wanted to bring back to life, and then a question mark. The idea is the consequences of losing a loved one drove our father mad enough to create the house we've pondered for so long. That combined with his mind getting possessed by the devil while trying to bring his daughter back to life. Again, I'm assuming it's a daughter because of the scream from the basement. Figure that's either his daughter or someone else's who he's gonna use to sacrifice to the devil to get his daughter back. Now we, as the only sane, living, and not kidnapped sibling left, must conquer our father's subconscious fears and haunting memories and carpentry skills. And we must conquer our own as well. The subconscious fears and memories part, not, not the carpentry skills. Judging by the school minigame, some of these memories are ours. Judging by the gloves in the gramophone cutscene, some of them are our father's. And all of them have the shadow demon man. That being said, does anyone else think it's weird the house immediately changes from abandoned looking and not so crazy to this? All that seems to happen is this cutscene and then poof! To account for this, I propose the neighbor kidnapped us after we first bring our stuff into the house, but he releases us some time after. This explains how enough time passes for him to construct the new house. We know he's hiding someone down there, so why not you? At least for a little while, after he drugs you a la Alpha 2 and then keeps you unconscious for long enough to modify the house. Then he releases you and lets the game of cat and mouse begin. No doubt the game of a bored, cruel demon who feels no remorse for using a family as entertainment. 
or as pawns in a plan. In all honesty, the beta doesn't have much new information, but it does solidify the importance of these dream sequences, the Shadow Man, and the Gramophone. Our only hope is that, on August 29th, 2017, we can finally get some answers to what it all means. Only then will we put the pieces together of how our neighbor, our father, went from man to shopping cart. That warship Satan! I told you you couldn't handle the mystery. The lights won't even turn back on. Easiest outro editing ever. You're welcome, Tyler. So, so, so what do you think of the theory? D tell me down below. There will probably be some videos to click to. I I'm guessing Hello Neighbor videos. Also, the Patreon names will be back next video. It's all part of the bit. Mm-mm. Just gotta run out the clock here. <clears throat> um, uh. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs>